that witches weren't always bad and that they're not necessarily all bad but at this particular time in this particular society being a witch is a bad thing and if you are found to be a witch you are necessarily the enemy and many of the witches are cruel and many of them are evil and um, she decided at some point that I think she fell in love with someone who wasn't a witch and so had to pretend that she wasn't a witch in order to marry the man she loved and also she had an ambition and, and this is something that isn't entirely clear in the books but she found a seventh son to fall in love with so that she could have a seventh son and I want, one wonders how much that was her plan all along. At the beginning Tom is a kind of anti-hero, he's, he's almost dare I say it, the sort of runt of the litter of her many children, and she has more than seven. Um, he is uh, weaker than the other boys, and he has, is prone to these dreams and fits that make him not as useful around the pig farm that they own. And, and I think mothers have a particular connection with a child who they perceive as picked on or is weaker or has some condition that makes them vulnerable. So I think they have a very strong connection and she's always known that his dreams were visions and rather than hallucinations. And I, there's a sense that she knows that one day Master Gregory is going to come along or something is going to come along that will mark him out as having a, an extraordinary destiny. She's phenomenal, you know, because she's very chatty in the makeup trailer and we had some kind of mutual similar experiences of life and work we were chatting away like a couple of old gossips and then on uh, you know action she's just terrifying <laughs> and phenomenally good and I, I was like oh goodness you know this very nice woman I was having a chat to um, turned into mother Malkin in in the twinkling of an eye and it was it was very alarming I have to say what I love about this story as a, is its diversity, that it's rooted in age-old stories and traditions, but that it has a very modern feel, that, that it's very inclusive uh, in this, the depiction of the people it's talking about, and it's very modern in the ideas it's bringing, but, but it's rooted in this sort of feeling of, of ancient, the ancient world. And so there's a, it, but you know, just in terms of the look of it, the special effects, the fights, the magic, the beauty, uh, it really does cover every base for for a spectator. You know, um, if you want to come and and look at something beautiful, there's something beautiful. If you want to be scared or amazed, there's something here for you too. Hello, Valerie here with a pretty cool fact from Thelma and Louise. Did you know that Ridley Scott had vetoed the idea of Louise kissing Thelma at the end? But Sarandon did it anyway without telling him. It was the last shot on the last day and Scott had no choice but to use it. And that, as they say, is history. Mwah. Subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest trailers. See ya!